Hey, what up, boys? So, no intro today for a couple of reasons. First of all, this next part of the intro series is planning to be the penultimate conclusion, so I really want to do it justice, and it's simply not ready yet. Secondly, I want to take a slight tangent off what we saw during the tank showcase and discuss a more personal opinion, mainly what makes a class good. Core gameplay that governs the general gameplay loop is important, of course, but the difference between a good MMO and a great MMO is, in my opinion, how well designed and diverse their classes are. And we'll be using a few examples to describe this today. But before we get into that, our patrons and I would love for you to grab yourself a Cola, because I think one of the reasons World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy XIV are highly praised is simply because of how well made each and every one of their classes are, having custom, well thought out class UIs that utilize unique resource management to make every single one fresh and exciting every single time. And I think this is one of the core, most important parts for not only Ashes of Creation's archetype design, but I also think it needs to spread across that 64 class augment system as well. And I have a few baseless, speculatory ways that we can implement that in this copium induced trance of a video. Now, with all that bollocks out of the way, so one of my core fears for Ashes of Creation's design is how close everything is to Arcage. Now, don't get me wrong, Arcage has some great core systems and overarching world design, however, their class and customization always felt a bit shallow and lackluster for me. The multi-class system made the game a balanced nightmare that was borderline unplayable, the classes themselves were uninspired, the progression was cookie cutter, and ultimately, it was just very mediocre. Nothing stood out as well made, and quite a lot stood out as talentless. As I said in the intro, I don't think anyone with at least two brain cells to rub together would disagree World of Warcraft or Final Fantasy XIV do class design the best. Each of the classes are unique, have their own playstyle, resources to manage, and mini games to play within their moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, making these two tab-targeting games more than just pressing a rotation, more than just looking at your interface, more than just moving out of fire. Your reacting to the current situation and making choices based on your class's mechanics, limitations, and cooldowns. This is what makes tab targeting superior to action combat. The deeper you go into action-based combat, the more homogenized your classes become. Black Desert Online, arguably the game that claims the best action combat within the MMORPG genre currently, is a prime example of this homogenization and lack of synergy. It's borderline impossible to design Design compelling group-based content with teamwork and synergy when all the classes act like a single-player experience. BDO is notorious for making their classes play like Super Saiyans, teleporting around, blowing up screens worth of mobs at a time, and just generally being badass. That is a vibe, don't get me wrong, however, it's not an MMORPG vibe. If you enjoy this, then maybe it's not an MMORPG you want after all. To me, it just sounds like you want a single-player game with the illusion of players around you. That already exists in abundance within the MMO genre, but that's not what Ashes of Creation is trying to be. Class design in 14 and WoW are made to synergize with each other. That Trinity system is a core component to build teamwork off. However, without interesting class design in itself, that Trinity system becomes a boring game of spreadsheets and UI management. But it's very important to visualize that class design clearly. Arcage was lacking this, and again, I fear it will be lacking in Ashes of Creation as well. Interesting, unique, and clearly visible mechanics that you can play around and react to at a glance is crucial for diversifying class mechanics, and most of the work is achieved through a simple UI feature. 
During the Tank and Cleric showcases, we got our first look at how class mechanics are being designed. Just a kit with cooldowns and a resource cost isn't good enough for MMORPGs in the current year after all, and it's good to see Intrepid recognise this also, even at this early stage of development. Clerics have convictions, which are generated with certain spells designed to be spammed and do very little in general, but then these convictions are consumed when special spender-type abilities are used to increase their power significantly for burst-type healing or damage. The clear example we were given for how convictions are spent was on Cleansing Wave, empowering it to bounce to additional targets. It's a nice and simple building and spending design that can be utilised in a lot of you unique ways that reflect the player's skill. However, currently, as it stands, these convictions are displayed only through small buffs under your character's health and mana UI. And although it is still in early development and the UI quite literally doesn't even exist yet, because of Arcage displaying their class mechanic in this way as well, I fear Intrepid also have this intent. In my opinion, this is not good enough, and much better, more talented ways to display class mechanics is shown in World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy XIV. I'd like to see all archetype mechanics be displayed in their own unique UI feature. Something simple and clear that taps into that class fantasy, displaying these convictions as holy sigils that fill up as you build them and can be clearly seen within the UI at a glance. We can of course do this for the recently revealed tank courage mechanics as well, displaying the courage stacks as something like a bar that builds up as the tank takes damage and changes aesthetics entirely when grit is toggled on. Having resources be displayed clearly is extremely important for moment-to-moment -moment gameplay in an MMORPG, especially for one that isn't aiming to need add-ons like Ashes of Creation. When you hide important mechanics behind something as trivial as buffs that get lost in the sea of other buffs, you're limiting the potential gameplay of your average player. You can't expect your average pleb to enjoy fumbling through small UI features to understand how to play their class, and that's why WoW and 14 remain so popular. The point of entry is easy to understand, and that ease of access allows players to connect with their characters. It lets people get excited to try new classes. Now, I also have some pretty strong opinions about the tank, fighter, rogue, ranger, and basically all the archetypes in Ashes of Creation being governed by just mana. There are murmurs of stamina coming into the game very, very soon, but this heavy focus on mana is also a remnant from Arcage's ancient talentless design. In my opinion, it has no place in modern MMORPGs. Classes become fun because you're managing multiple resources at once on top of that class mechanics, and that's what makes World of Warcraft superior as an MMORPG. Now, coming up, we're going to be getting into the territory of baseless speculation for baseless speculation, and there's only so many layers we can go deep before the content begins to feel forced. Ironic, coming from a channel discussing a game that quite literally doesn't exist, I know, so let's continue the trend with even more. I almost just cut out this next four minutes of bullshit entirely. In the end, I decided to keep it regardless because you guys loved the baseless speculation in the previous video, and I love reading your comments about about it. So sit back, relax, and take a deep breath from your copium inhalers, my friends. We're about to dive deep into the machinations of a madman whose life depends on literal thin air. So augments are obviously an important part of this game's customization, and because we know very little about it, it's very easy to speculate and blow expectations out of the water. Because of this, I'd like you to take this segment with a pinch of salt and a think about it as just a bit of fun, not an actual serious piece of speculation based off information we know. In the previous video, we brought up the idea of color coding abilities per archetype, and because of the modular way Ashes of Creation is designing their spells, it's easy easy for them to change abilities based off hue and particle effects inherent to Unreal Engine 5's new workflow feature. So then, if your in-game spells are changing their hue and aesthetics due to the augments that they have applied, it doesn't really make much sense for your UI to remain unchanged. 
right? WoW in particular is great at this because each of their specs have customized UI features that suit the new playstyle. Should a Shadow Disciples UI, which is the Cleric plus Rogue, have the same UI aesthetics as the Oracle, or as the Templar, or the pure High Priest? I think not, because the UI itself plays a huge part of the class fantasy as we discussed in the previous segment. Does this mean that each and every one of the 64 classes should have their own UI with unique resource spending mechanics? No, 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 no. Obviously not, because it's simply not necessary. The core mechanics should remain the same between each of the archetype classes, but just the way in which they're generated, spent, and affect our abilities are the aspects that change between them. Let's go back to the tank to show this in action, because this is the most fleshed out example we have. Getting that archetype mechanic to aesthetically match the actual class you're playing is a very important part of MMORPGs. Displaying courage should match the fantasy in Intrepid are aiming for each of those eight types. Even if functionality, it isn't changing much. Aesthetically, you can make a huge difference. If each of the eight archetypes are symbolized with their own distinct colors, then when the tank changes its class to the Warden, which is tank plus ranger, then the UI bar should change to green and have its artwork also modified to match that. I spent some time designing an example here for the Warden as I visualized them to be very nature and ranged-like in aesthetic, so slightly changing that original UI to represent that fantasy is important. We can do this again for the Tank Plus Cleric, which changes your class to the Paladin, a fantasy very different to the Warden, and having the archetype mechanic resonate that class fantasy through the UI works wonders for the final product, even though technically the augments are probably not going to impact the gameplay in the way ways that we'd want it to, featuring 64 uniquely designed classes just like how WoW features over 36 unique specs across all of its classes. You've got to keep your expectations somewhat realistic here. Ultimately, I think I just need to repeat myself from the last video. The potential for Ashes of Creation's class design is insane. And the moral of today's video is basically aesthetics and clear, well-designed UI features are just as important for class fantasy as the gameplay itself. But as usual, I am just one nerd desperate for a good MMO, and my opinion means nothing without yours in the comments below. And as always, I want to thank my patrons. Your help has been keeping this content flowing, even though said content quite literally doesn't even exist. Uh, this channel is quite an anomaly, and without your support, this balding, middle-aged man wouldn't be able to live his dream of talking shit on the internet. If you made it to the end of the video, surely it's worth giving a like, and if you're not one of the 80% who haven't already, why not go ahead and subscribe? And I'll see you in the next one, because you're high on copium.